And we're back with the special extended coverage of the regional elections in France, where exit polls are now uh, filtering in according to initial projections. Nicolas Sarkozy's Republicans have come out on top in five regions, with Francois Hollande's socialists winning three regions, and the National Front is not expected to win any regions, and both Marie Le Pen's and her niece Marion have been beaten in their respective uh, uh, fronts. And additional results, of course, for from four regions uh, is still coming in. And joining me uh, tonight to discuss this and uh, to understand a little bit more what is going on, what is the first round, second round, uh, are Avi Primo, former Israeli ambassador to the European Union and Germany. Good evening. Good to have you here. Good evening. And also Dani Ailon, former Israeli deputy foreign minister. Good evening. Good Welcome back. Good evening, Lucy. Thank you. Good to see you. And Jack Melia, special Middle East analyst and Jerusalem Center for Public Affairs and former foreign policy advisor to Prime Minister Yitzhak Good evening. All Okay, so gentlemen, let's uh, start understanding what is happening here, why the first results were so clear-cut, and now we're seeing just, uh, let's say, a um, pullback, we can say, from the initial, because just a week ago we were sitting here and we were no, talking, I was what sitting there. is going on <laughs> in, uh, what is going on in France and how come they're choosing Marie Le Pen's uh, uh, party to be their voice, and now it's not. Look, in France, there was always a vote of protest. People would not necessarily vote for a party they want to see really in power, but they have a party they want to vote for in order to protest, to protest against the government, protest against the situation, whatever they want to protest against, frustrated people. Traditionally, this was a communist party. They used to get about 25%. That's more or less what Marie Le Pen just got about I, I, in the first round anyway. Yeah. And the protest is always stronger in the first round than in the second round. First round, you know, they get their frustration out. In the second round, they think about it again. But they don't vote for this party particularly because they want this ideology or these people in power. Some of them do, of course. But now that the Communist Party has disappeared, we have Le Pen as a uh, protest party and I think that's the explanation. You know, um, uh, after a week of uh, analysis and discussions about what will be the future of uh, France if Marie Le Pen really will get stronger, and I'm taking what you just told me, Ambassador uh, Primo, and um, maybe people said, okay, we protested. This is what <clears throat> we will vote if you will continue your way. Now, after we thought about it, we voted again. We're giving you a second chance. Is this what is happening, or this the, the, is something the, the, else? This completely? is also a matter of mathematics. Last week, when we discussed the, the, the results of the elections, we knew that uh, Marie Le Pen uh, had taken a third of the voice of the votes, and two thirds were the divided between the Republicans and, of course, the uh, uh, the others who were running the socialists. So, if <laughs> by simple mathematics, the two who lost to Marie Le Pen join forces. And this, is how, this is how she was beaten. This is not, it doesn't mean that the one third of the vote in France is still it, problematic from our point of view. It's still Front National. They are very much to the right. And it, this hasn't changed. They have been beaten because of the coalition of the two others. May I say something? To yes, just a little remark. You say 33%, and you're of course right. But don't forget that the participation is very low in this kind of elections. That doesn't mean 33% of the French. No, I'm talking uh, about the vote. Right. Okay, yeah. I just wanted to make yeah. this. You know, we're talking about the, the first round and the second round uh, at the beginning of uh, the edition. Uh, I asked Ambassador Lovanombi that we're not used to this first round, second round. And he answered, he said, maybe if we had first round and second round, which uh, can be a good... Uh, in, in some municipalities, we have first round and second round in Israel. Which can, can be a good yeah. uh, system. Maybe uh, it, the, it would change, uh, let's say, the political arena here in Israel. Can this second round change something? Because it made Francois Hollande and it made Sarkozy mm -hmm. unite, and it made them go out on the streets and start actually working and listen to what the people willing and what the people want. Mm -hmm. Maybe this is the wake-up call that they needed, or it will last only 
few months and then everything will get back to normal. Yes, Lucy, I, I would say this, uh, this system, this political system of uh, having a second round, uh, I think it crystallizes really the political landscape and it really compels the voters to take a decision. As Ambassador Primor said, in a, in a second round, there is no room for protest vote. They are already been counted in the first uh, round. So in a, in a way, here in a tactical way, what the, um, the socialists did by actually giving up many of the regions, many of the districts to, to give it to Sarkozy, they said, well, we prefer Sarkozy. For us, Sarkozy is the lesser of the two evils. And in a way, I think in France and in all of Europe, people can smile again because a, a Le Pen, let's say uh, a strong position in France, which would have put her in a, an arm's uh, distance uh, with the uh, presidency two years from now, I think it would have been very bad, not only for France, but for Europe as a whole. You know, uh, just last week, just you see that I was listening uh, yeah, to the uh, well, conversation, so. which was uh, very <laughs> important. When I, uh, I mentioned Sarkozy and we spoke about the chances that Sarkozy will actually, it will give him some kind of a lead in the presidency. You said that he needs to pass more, like, a little have bit more difficulty. Problems. Yes, he has legal, more legal problems. More problems until yes, he will definitely. get there. What are the chances that this will ease the way and these results will ease the way for Sarkozy to uh, run for the next uh, presidential uh, campaign? I think it's too early to say. Look, the, the um, elections will take place, I think, in uh, May or in uh, April or May. In so one and a half years. Yeah. And it's very difficult to say what the issue will be in these elections. But generally speaking, both are very weak, the socialists and uh, Sarkozy as well. So it's very difficult to say. I might be a dark horse somewhere. I don't think that if the uh, popularity of the president of the president is, will remain as low as it is today, that he will be candidate again. And then the question is, who will be the socialist candidate? And in accordance to that, the uh, conservatives will have to make their decision. But um, I don't really expect the legal problems that uh, Sarkozy has today will really be will disappear because of these uh no, I, I don't think it'll it'll disturb him in the in the uh, real vote. I think it's a problem today. It won't be a problem in a year. But the question is, who will be the opponent, the socialist opponent? And this we cannot say today. Naturally, <laughs> the president wants to uh, be, run again, <laughs> but course. his popularity, in spite of what it did in the last weeks, remains so low that I. I don't see him as a candidate again if that if it remains this way. Yeah, so I want to uh, take you uh, all to uh, this specific uh, issue about Francois Hollande. Let's uh, talk a little bit about Francois Hollande. Francois Hollande's uh, socialist uh, performed poorly in the regional elections, but the French leader's popularity is actually up in the wake of the Paris attacks. It marks a significant shift uh, from just last year when Hollande's uh, favorability rating fell to a record low 13 percent. I-24 News correspondent Shani Nakhshoni has more. The far right tends to gain support in countries mired in financial or security crisis. Security is the priority for me. Between Charlie Hebdo and the Bataclan, this is the priority for me. In France, like other European countries, the threat posed by the Islamic State has given rise to Marine Le Pen's National Front. I like democracy and I don't like to see voters be treated as children, be terrorized such as what several people have tried to do, the Prime Minister especially, in profoundly questionable conditions. On the flip side, insecurity sometimes has the effect of making people stick with the familiar. Current President François Hollande became the least popular president in France's history just two years ago, with 26 percent of the population support. Yet Hollande's approval rating have been on the rise since the Charlie Hebdo and the kosher grocery store attack in Paris last January, improving by 21 points. Even though some say that nothing significant was achieved between January and November and that the attacks could have been avoided, this image of François Hollande as a war leader and of a president who reacted immediately, which explains this incredible boost in popularity. After last month's terror attack in Paris, Hollande's popularity has risen to its highest level since 2012, reaching 50 percent. 
According to the polls, the increase is attributed to the president's hardline response against IS jihadists. Hollande is currently more popular than his conservative predecessor, Nicolas Sarkozy, was at the same stage of his tenure. Plus, a 22-point increase is something that has never been seen before. Symbolically, 50% is a result that he could never have dreamed of. Hollande's popularity did not translate into success for the Socialist Party in the regional elections, a prelude for presidential elections in 2017. Okay. So uh, let's uh, speak, uh, gentlemen, about uh, François Hollande. But before we will speak about François Hollande, you wanted to give uh, us uh, one remark about Marie Le Pen. Look, Marie Le Pen is a... Uh, is a big question mark, because she ousted her father. Her father was the grounder of the party, and the father made her. Without her father, she wouldn't be where she is. And yet, there was a big uh, fight between them. And uh, her father had to, uh, to, to, to draw back, and to totally. Why? Because she has different opinions, because she is of a different mind, she has a different analysis of politics, I don't know. But she understands one thing. She understands very well that the days of her father and his ideology and the old fascist are gone. Now, she cannot uh, take leave of all of them because there's still voters among them and she needs their votes. But most of the people who vote for her are not identified with the, social, with the uh, fascism of her father. I'll tell you more than that. She tried more than once to come to Israel. She tried to meet Jewish leaders in America. She tries to meet Israelis. She wants to show everywhere, Jews as well, that she is not her father. She has different ideas. Is it because she has different ideas, or is it because she understands that the ideas of her father are not rentable today? I don't know. But whatever she says does not correspond in any way to that what her father used to say. You know, uh, maybe uh, the Jewish uh, community understands that it, if it walks like a duck, it, uh, <laughs> it talks like a duck, and it sounds it like a duck. duck, it's a duck. <laughs> uh, but it's Marie Le Pen's duck. Yeah. But, okay. Uh, let's uh, go uh, to our I-24 News uh, international analyst, uh, Christian Malal, with the first uh, results. Uh, Christian, unfortunately, we are not able to see you live, but we are hearing you. Uh, what you were able to tell us just uh, an hour ago, now you can tell, it, tell us see, in a formal see, way? The very first conclusions we can draw, Lucy, is that it's a very humiliating defeat for the far right of Madame Le Pen, uh, who has got no region, no region. Uh, it's a middle-of-the-road success for the right-wing Republican of Monsieur Sarkozy at the headquarters of which I am right now, and they have got five regions out of the 13, given for sure. And the socialists are not doing that bad, and they could be very satisfactory because there are four regions right now. There are three regions among which the most important, uh, Paris and suburbs, Ile-de-France, which are three regions which are too close to call with Normandy and Burgundy. And uh, so we have five for the Republicans, four for the socialists, nothing for the uh, far right. And at the same time, I would be tempted to say that uh, the winner somewhere would be the socialists because uh, they were the one they asked their voters, their supporters, to vote for the right-wing traditional party to eliminate uh, far-right party uh, in North Pas de Calais and uh, in uh, south of France. And uh, they might get uh, Paris suburbs, Ile-de-France. So it might be France would be shared by the traditional party, uh, Republicans and the socialists. It is the way things are shaping up right now, Lucy. Uh, Christian, what if, let's uh, try to, let's play a game. What if? What if you were Marine Le Pen and you saw the results tonight and you needed to take uh, other measures tomorrow morning? What will be the first step that you will do? Who are you talking to about Marine Le Pen? But Ma Ma Marine Le Pen will charge she will very hardly charge uh, the socialists and the Republicans uh, to eliminate a party uh, which has six million voters at the former uh, uh, presidential election in 2012. And last week, at the first round, they were there a little bit more than six million voters. And definitely, she would charge them. They said they would, she would say they don't want the national, the front national and the far right, whatever 
to exist in this country, and we still exist because we have six million voters. It would be a big fight. And, uh, but the results tonight show the country will be split, shared between traditional Republican, right-wing Republican of Monsieur Sarkozy, and the Socialist Party, who is, which is going to good, have a good result tonight. It's amazing because there have been so much criticized, President Holland, for a bad economy, disastrous social affairs in this country, and they are doing quite well, I should say. Yes, uh, uh, Christian Malal, thank you very much uh, for being with us uh, for now. Of course, uh, we will get back to you uh, just in a short while. Um, Ambassador Ayalon, you know, we're looking at the situation. Maybe the French people just said, okay, you know, we've been through a lot uh, during the last year. We've been through a lot just last month. We understand that the situation is complicated in uh, Europe, but it's not that complicated that we need to go to the extreme. Maybe we need to take some measures, but not that extreme. Well, I think, uh, Lucy, we cannot take out of uh, context, of course, the, uh, the actuality and uh, or actualia. And I think, although it's been 30 days now since the uh, terror uh, events in, in Paris, uh, they had some good news today uh, with the um, you know, signing of the, the climate change uh, conference with an overwhelming vote, which also I think Hollande could uh, really benefit, and he did benefit, I think, somewhat in, in the polls. But the question will be, I think these results are pretty um, obvious, that uh, Marie Le Pen and her uh, uh, nationalist right party is out of the game for now, but it can actually backfire two years from now. And in, in two years from now, maybe her voters, maybe some of the, um, the, the, the socialists and some of the um, Republicans, which uh, they have no too much uh, common denominator, and yet they were pushed to vote, you know, against their own conscience. You know, so it's going to be very interesting to see if she can really, you know, with a good campaign, she can get a lot of those votes back. You know, let's uh, try to think uh, together, you gentlemen, about uh, just the comments that Donald Trump uh, made just uh, two days, three days after uh, Marie Le Pen's uh, win, about uh, one day, I think it was, uh, after Marie Le Pen's uh, winning in the first round. And he said about uh, the Muslims should be forbidden to get into the United States. And a lot of uh, people were, some supported him, he went on up in the polls, and at the end of the day, at when people are going to vote, they are not actually 100 percent with these thoughts, with the thoughts like the extreme thoughts of Donald Trump, the extreme thoughts of uh, Marine Le Pen, and yeah, maybe the polls, the polls are here. The, the, he is leading. He is lead, among is, the Republicans. Among the Republicans, and I mean, the, and Hillary Clinton is not going so brightly the, lately. So I mean, the, and the, the Democratic uh, camp is uh, in, in disarray in, in a way right now. So the people are still sticking to basically the ideas that he has he has just uh, uh, expressed. The same is with the six million of French who have voted for the phone. Yeah, but the, the Jacques, we're talking about a population that has a lot of migrants that are second and third and fourth generation. You have, the, general, you have the same problems in the state. You have a million Mexicans coming into the United States every year. Every you you have uh, uh, this law that uh, the, that uh, Barack Obama is trying to promote to legalize all those migrants as as Americans, and this there's a big opposition to that. Exactly the same problem that you have in France with the migrants. Now, those six millions are, are still are not going to change their opinion. They are still going to vote for the Front National. This is why I told you that in the next ele presidential elections, there will be two candidates. One would be Marine Le Pen, and the second one, I don't know. Maybe Sarkozy or maybe somebody else. This is what the, the, this is the outcome of this in politics. The second round. In the second round, yes. But with all the migrants pouring into Europe and pouring into France, and we know the problem of the minorities in France. What are the chances that eventually Marine Le Pen will, will win these elections or will win the votes of a state or a country that is open or supposed to be liberal to minority groups? I don't think so. Look, when you look at the history of France, you see there was always a party of protest. Always somebody people would vote for because they're fed up with the government, they're fed up with the system, they're fed up with this, they're fed up with that. That amounts at, at best to one-third of the, uh, or not even, one-fourth of the voters. 
It used to be the Communist Party. It is Le Pen now, but it's still the same proportion. People who want to protest, who want to express their disgust with the government or whatever it is. But then when it comes to real business, you see that uh, 75% vote for the other parties. And the question is for which party, that's all. Now, you must remember this, the French are dissatisfied at the moment because in the last years, the economy hasn't been going well. The economy is still not going well. It, they have a, a growth of about one to one and a half percent yearly, which is better than they used to have a year or two ago, <clears throat> but it's still too low because France, contrary to almost all the European countries, has a growing population. Germany has a declining population. That's why Germany needs immigrants for work. France doesn't need immigrants because it has a growing population. Since the Second World War, this has been going on. So the situation is totally different. But, I mean, Marie Le Pen uh, as a phenomenon is, of course, worrying. So let's uh, talk. We just uh, started talking about Francois Hollande, and I want to talk about uh, maybe the, this uh, change of situation in Francois Hollande's uh, popularity, finding himself on just a year ago on a really, really decreasing uh, situation, and now he's increasing, although we're seeing Marine Le Pen's increasing well, uh, also know, in the popularity. So let's try to understand François the Hollande balance. Is, that François we're Hollande himself here. is a phenomenon. He <laughs> is the, the <laughs> most uh, unusual politician that yeah. France could have ever given to, the, uh, to France. You know, this is um, the most insignificant politician inside the Socialist Party who was elected president. Yeah. So this is, I mean, if you're talking about the land of miracles, this is the land of miracles. <laughs> and this is, uh, if you compare him to most uh, uh, French presidents, this is the most bellicous. He went on war, and then he went openly and overtly on war as no other president did before him. And he is, I mean, he is succeeding, at, as you said, in getting, uh, in getting a, a better poll, a better, a better uh, people are believing in him much more than and they were. And he managed in situations in a really hard time. And he France. brought to Paris 195 uh, uh, leaders of the world and who signed an agreement. Uh, the, that under walked his into Champs-Élysées in the first yeah. attacks and now signed an agreement on a climate... Yeah. Uh, uh, but when it comes to elections, don't forget, it's the economy, stupid. Yeah. So that's what's going to happen in France as well. <laughs> Let's, yes. The last thing I want to say, you know, we can never predict. You know, if you look at elections today, we, we see actually that there is a bankruptcy of all the posters. <clears throat> you know, look even here in, in Israel. You know, before the, the last elections, everybody thought Netanyahu will lose. He was really down in the polls. He won the elections. The same thing could happen here. The same thing with Obama and Romney, you know, back in uh, four years ago. Uh, with Hollande, you never know. Uh, something can happen, you know, like the Paris attack. God forbid it will not happen, but uh, maybe some good things. I agree if the economy picks up a little bit, I think he has a very good chance, even though he is, I agree, he is the most unlikely candidate uh, as a French <laughs> politician. But the power of the office is still very strong. And if the economy picks up and if he shows more leadership capabilities as he had, with the Paris attack, I think he can be for a second term. Yeah. Let's put the agenda on the table. Just uh, we're waking up tomorrow morning. Of course, the presidential uh, campaign is still going. What will be on the agenda for all the parties? Will be because in Israel we know that security. If you're talking security, if you are Mr. Security, probably you will win the elections. In France, what it will be? It will be first the security after the terror attacks, then the economy, then social affairs, or the, let's say, order will change. How can you tell that? We have about a year to go before the election campaign starts. The election will take place in a year and four months or something like that. So we still have a, a year. What will happen during this year? Will there be more um, attacks against France? Will there be uh, more terrorist attacks? Yes. What will the economy look like? It all depends. <laughs> you are pessimistic today. I, I mean, you can't really tell. If everything remains calm and quiet, the way it is at the moment, then the economy will be the decision-making point. Because the economy was in a bad shape in the last years, it's picking up now, but very slowly, the question will be the economic problem. Because the, uh, uh, the population of France grows and the economy has to grow faster than it goes in other countries. And, and therefore that will be, unless there's another terrorist, terrorist attack. attack. 
But the terrorist you know, attack is not connected somehow to the economic situation? I, I don't know so much because last week when Marine Le Pen just spoke after the, the results of the, the election, she said that the people have spoken. In fact, the people of France have spoken concerning their security. And since uh, last year, since last year, a lot has been done in this field in France, voting a law uh, as the Patriot uh, Act in, the, in America, giving more uh, power to the uh, intelligence services, trying to recruit uh, at least 8,500 new agents. This, this is already there. France is changing in this pattern. If somebody wants to be a president, he has to show that he is providing security to the French. So. Uh, economy is important. E economy is very important, as, uh, as uh, the ambassador said earlier. But right now, mm -hmm. you are confronting Daesh. I don't know what will happen with Daesh in, uh, in a year and a half from now. Maybe so. the Americans, you know, the, or the Russians, maybe the Russians will, say, will, uh, will succeed finally in subduing this, uh, the, this monster. Then we'll talk about something else. But if not, if the war continues, if the French are involved in this war and getting hurt and more and more, this is the issue of the elections. But for me, you know, in the last year, it seems that uh, after the Charlie Hebdo attacks and then uh, we saw what just happens in the streets of, uh, and on the streets of uh, Paris, it seems that the French people, because you're saying that the French people has, have uh, spoken, it seems that it's like they woke up to a new reality each and every time and they were surprised that this happened to them and they don't believe that it actually happened to them. So I don't know if the people's memory is too short or the French no. people's memory uh, is specifically too short that it's Lucy, lasting even a year. the three last terrorist attacks on the, in French territory were against Jewish targets. The last one right now in Paris at the Bataclan was against the French. Till then, it was limited to Jewish targets. So it was Jewish. This was the. the this was Charlie Hebdo was also in, was in, a, in a way. In, well, it was Jewish. Muslim in a way. But let me tell you something else. Uh, before 9/11, there were various terrorist attacks in America. But you know, you somehow live with it. Okay, uh, it's a bad situation. It'll pass. We'll go. Only 9/11 woke the Americans up, and maybe. What happened now in France we'll wake wakes the you. French up, even though they had terrorist attacks before. Look, Gentlemen. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm sorry. No. <laughs> no, I just wanted to say that, look at Obama. It took him two weeks to, uh, to recognize that San Bernardino is uh, And today is, is he nice. just said that he's reading yeah. hearts to understand what is happening Yeah, what's in happening, yeah. So, you know, this is just let's take it for things into perspective. Uh, gentlemen, thank you very much for being with me in this part. That's it for tonight. Tomorrow we will be here again at the same time, same place from the Jeff Report. Israel, have peace. Have a great week.